In his first season as Falcons head coach off to an 0-2 start. And Joe Judge in his second season on the Giants sideline. Grant Cano gets things started. Cordero Patterson, one of the best return men in NFL history, will not have an opportunity to bring it out. So Matt Ryan and the Falcons will start from their 25-yard line. Most pass yards, first 14 seasons. He was the NFL MVP back in 2016. Mike Davis in the backfield. The handoff, it's Davis. Good second effort. Davis gains four out to the 29-yard line. As we check out the Falcons' offensive line. Second down and six. Off the fake. Here's Davis out of the backfield. Knocked out of bounds by Adoree Jackson at the 32-yard line. Third and three coming up for the Falcons against this Giants defense. Blake Martinez, a tackling machine. James Bradbury with an interception last week in Washington. Third down and three. Opening possession of the game for Atlanta. As Ryan throws, there is a flag. Pass was intended for Olamide Zacchaeus with Rodarius Williams defending. Pass interference, defense, number 25. Ball will be placed at the spot of the foul. Automatic first down. Penalties that issue for the Giants. They committed 11 in their last game against Washington. Ed. Draped all over the back. That's an easy call for the referees. Good ball placement by Matt Ryan as well. Low and away. Get the penalty or the incompletion or the first. Felipe Franks, third string quarterback. In a tight end for the Falcons. The handoff to Cordero Patterson. Not much. Kansi guard Martinez makes the stop. That's the type of run play you're going to see with Cordero Patterson in the game. It's similar to a kickoff. You stretch the field, let him build up some speed, one cut, and then go. Patterson, the nine-year vet, off to a good start with the Falcons. Atlanta sending in three tight ends. Second down and nine. Play action on second down. Ryan swings it out. It's Patterson. Makes a move. And is out to the 43-yard line. Jabril Peppers the tackle a yard shy of another Atlanta first down. Oh, man, I thought Matt Ryan was going to pull the trigger. Referee signaling a man down. Watch 54, Blake Martinez. Oh, and he just, remains down. Yeah, it just stays down. That would be a big loss to this Giants defense. Nobody touches him. That's the scariest part. Hope that he's doing well. We'll find out more later on. He's the signal caller on this Giants defense. And with Martinez on the sidelines, his teammates come up big on third down. Arthur Smith is trying to call some sort of wildcat with Felipe Franks. Matt Ryan was actually flexed, flexed out. Leads to no gain and a punt for the Falcons as you see Blake Martinez walking off. But great stop by that defense of all of them rallying to the ball. That's the physicality that defensive coordinator Patrick Graham was talking about. We saw Franks in a tight end earlier in that drive. 
Jabril. So Giants will start from their 25-yard line. Well, it's the last chance to play the $1 million Fox Super 6 NFL contest. It's free and easy. Just that to now correctly pick the outcomes from six of today's games for your chance to win a million dollars. Scan the QR code now, download the app, and play for free. I got my bets in, Kenny. I'm not going to tell you who I picked. Let's go six for six. If I tell you, then I'll say, oh, he's a homer, he's cheating. So I'm not going to say who I picked, but I got my six in. Daniel Jones and the Giants offense. Saquon Barkley in the backfield. Blue 80! What's that? Off the fake to Barkley on first down. Jones dumps it off. It's Barkley out of the backfield. And he has a Giants first down, a gain of 14. Nice start for Daniel Jones. And Jason Garrett, offensive coordinator, wanting to take a shot. It's a block him up. Give him some time, see if he can get the ball down the field. Fake to Saquon Bartley, sucked all the linebackers in. Nothing was there. Nice outlet for an easy first down. Penalty marker, Adrian Hill, our referee. Holding offense, number 69. 10-yard penalty, replay, first down. That's Billy Price, Kenny, the center, caught for holding. And you know, it's tough with the offensive line. You, you want to get them involved. And the best way to get them involved is with that run game. But you can't have the self-inflicted wounds. This is what Joe Judge told us Friday. These types of penalties will kill them offensively. Sets the Giants back 10 yards. First down and 20. Jones moving to his right. Can't find anyone. Rush for 95 yards in the last game against Washington. That's a new franchise record for a quarterback. Forced out of bounds by Aluakon after a gain of eight and then some extracurricular activity. Yeah, Giants feel like Aluakon should have gotten a penalty there, tackled him outside. It looks like he actually started to wrap him up before he went out of bounds and then kind of dragged him when he was out of bounds. A good no call by the officials. Look at the Giants lineup. Kenny Galladay was questionable, but he is out on the field. Sterling Shepard slot to the left. On second down at 12. Pass is caught by Darius Slayton. Out of the 39-yard line, so the Giants now facing a third down at five. Up against the Falcons defense that has allowed a league high 80 points over the first two games. Yeah, but they have played better. They've played harder. And you look at Dante Fowler, I really like Brady Jarrett. Brady Jarrett has been a, a, a stalwart for this defense. Very quick, very explosive, extremely disruptive. Doesn't have the stats like an Aaron Donald but it's really good and really athletic at that defensive front. Defense hasn't allowed all those points. Buccaneers returned two picks for touchdowns last week. Jones down the sideline. It's C.J. Ford activated from the practice squad yesterday who makes the catch. 38-yard connection. C.J. Ford on the outside. What a throwing. What a catch. Daniel Jones gets nothing but time, puts it up and away where only C.J. Ford could get it. Great, great pass, and that's the way to stretch the field for this Giants offense. From the Falcons, 22, it's Barkley. Saquon Barkley coming back from the injury. Giants played their first two games in a stretch of five days, but now some extra time following the loss in Washington two Thursdays ago. And it's his first time, he said, getting into a routine. His first time in almost two years now. Getting a routine, now feeling good. And at some point, which I really liked about Joe Judge, he said, we're going to stop asking him how he feels. Just let him go out there and play. 
Barkley gains seven on first down. Second down and three. It's Barkley again. Looks to be just short. Dante Fowler wrapped him up. And Giants fans should be happy. It's only a two-yard game. But be happy that Daniel Jones directing the offense, getting in and out of plays. You hear all the communication right before the snap. He recognized something defensively, changed into it, gets him into a third and manageable as opposed to a possible interception or a bad play. Giants send in their fullback, Eli fullback Petty. Guy. Jones rolling right. Will pick up the first down with his legs. Knocked out of bounds at the Atlanta eight-yard line. It's such a blessing. If you're, if you're Jason Garrett, it's such a blessing to have a Daniel Jones that's extremely mobile, even though it's not advertised like a Lamar Jackson or, or any other, other quarterbacks. He does a really good job with his legs, so you're able to fake with Saquon Barkley and then scramble out. It's really a two-way go for Daniel Jones. Hand it off or get the first down. He's the Giants' leading rusher this season over the first two games. First and goal from the eights. Off the fake to Barkley. The pass was deflected by Dante Fowler. Second and goal upcoming. Here's what you were talking about, Jonathan. Look at the yards per rush. 8.1, more than his pass yards. One of three QBs. And we talked about Jalen Hurts, Lamar Jackson. We know they can run the ball, but you don't think Daniel Jones when you think about rushing quarterbacks. Now, though this stat looks good for Daniel Jones, I'm 99.9% .9 sure Saquon Barkley wants to lead him in rushing yards by the season's end. Absolutely. Second and goal from the eight-yard line. Jones taken down back at the 20 by a guy that I know you have a lot of respect for, Grady Jarrett. A ton of respect, and you cannot absolutely cannot leave him one-on-one -on -one with this offensive line. Grady Jarrett is going to come, and he is going to go and use that speed and explosiveness. Boom! Right around with the swim move. No one can stop him. I mean, that's that's too easy for him. Look at him. It's too easy. Showing a lot of that Aaron Donald-like explosiveness at that defensive front. Loss of 11 yards. Tenth play of this drive for the Giants. Third and goal from the 19-yard line. Jones moving to his right. Can't find anyone. Smart. Knocked out of bounds at the seven, so the Giants will send out the field goal unit. I, I mean, really smart, headsy play by that defense for the Falcons, recognizing it wasn't third and eight or third and nine. It was third and goal. Daniel Jones gets outside the pocket. Instead of everyone making a mad rush to go scramble and try to get him and leave someone open, they sit back. He rushes out of bounds, and now they get the field goal. Here's Graham Cano, has connected on 35 in a row, a franchise record. 25-yard attempt from the right hash. Make it 36 straight for Gano. The big play, Daniel Jones to C.J. Board, but then Grady Jarrett with the big play. 3-0 Giants. Three yards. But the sack by Grady Jarrett helped keep the Giants out of the end zone. I do like the Giants wanting to take shots. Atlanta had the opportunity. Matt Ryan didn't pull the trigger. Let's see if he does it this series. Patterson will take it out. Cordero Patterson out across the 20 as we head downstairs and check in with Sarah. Well, Kenny, we saw Blake Martinez go down untouched, and then he went straight into the locker room. Unfortunate news for this Giants defense. He is not going to return. It is a knee injury, and he is out, Kenny. So that's a big blow for the Giants. Martinez is the signal caller. Where's the green dot? Gets them in and out of those defenses at the line of scrimmage. He was making the checks. Patrick Graham raved about him. So Tate Crowder, number 48, went to his second helmet with the green dot as Ryan connects with Calvin Ridley for a gain of 19.
Yeah, Calvin really is so explosive. His first three steps, you can't tell what he's running. Patrick Graham says he disguises very well, and I say it's because he's so freaking explosive with those first three steps. He breaks the cushion of those secondary defenders and gets inside for an easy completion. From the 40-yard line on first down, it's Mike Davis. Davis able to gain five out to the 45-yard line. Yeah, a little old-school eyebacks, number 40, Keith Smith in there, and Arthur Smith picking up the tempo. You see no huddle. Cordero Patterson now goes back as a running back, and they still keep Keith Smith in as a fullback. So hard to bring down a guy like Patterson out of the backfield. Second down and five, here's Patterson. Gains a couple, and Joe Judge, the Giants head coach, knows Cordero Patterson very well. He coached him on special teams in New England. He said Patterson is explosive. He was a fun guy to coach, hard to tackle, and great in the locker room. Oh, Kenny, you missed the, the most obvious one, though. He said he is a big man, and we had to go down there pregame. I wanted to see for myself, well, how big is this guy? And he's solid, full, a full 230, 233 pounds is what he plays at, and he is big, he's strong. Patterson lined up to the left of Riot. Third down and three. Ryan to the outside. Looking nice for Ridley. Play. Giants football. Xavier McKinney. Well, that starts with James Bradbury. He's going to be locked one-on-one -on -one with Calvin Ridley. The ruling on the field is an incomplete pass. So the initial signal was Giants football. Now the Falcons will punt it away. Yeah, and that's smart by the officials. They, they huddle up to see that he never completes the catch. I like that James Bradbury goes and finishes that. Doesn't allow for him to come down with the completion for this fourth down. Tupper's back deep. <laughs> and that's some contact. The question is, did Pepper signal for a fair catch. He did. <laughs> there should be a flag, and it should be on Peppers for flopping. That was ridiculous. No flags. Saquon Barkley. Peppers clearly went to go see Hamilton, <laughs> and he's like, oh, let me show you my acting skills. Look at this. And then he's staring at the ref. The best is the official. He's like, dude, get up. Get up. Like, stop the nonsense. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Christian Blake says, who, me? <laughs> Giants start from the 11-yard line. Pass is caught. It's Kenny Galladay who breaks free. It has been well documented what took place on the sidelines during the game last week against Washington involving Galladay, and he was upset. That's Reportedly, at the coaching staff, and then he was listed as questionable for the game today, but with his hip, he's in yeah. uniform. Has his first reception. Looking good. Sits right in the zone. Gets those tough yards afterwards. That's what they brought him in here for. The former Lion, gain of 19. From the 30, Barkley. He loses three as we check in with Sarah. And there was Jason Garrett, David Gettleman. He was out on the field warming up before them. It was unclear if he was going to be able to go, but he got the green light, uh, which is good news for Daniel Jones in this offense. All right, thanks, Sarah. Second down at 13. Jones complete Evan Ingram, his first catch of the season. 
Tight end missed the first couple of games due to injury. Time for a game break. The Los Angeles, Kurt. All right, Jameis Winston, five touchdown passes week one. None last week. He's off to a good start so far in New England. Hook it up with Alvin Kamara for the 11-yard score, and they lead it 7-0 right now in the first quarter. Kenny, Jonathan, and Sarah. All right, thanks, Kurt. Giants will face the Saints in New Orleans next week. Sterling Shepard going in motion. That is Daniel Jones' guy on third down. Third down and five. He was looking for Shepard. Giants will punt it away. Yeah, we're going to see that combination all game long. Sterling Shepard does a tremendous job of getting separation on his routes. You can do individual routes. He sits in the zone. Daniel Jones and he have a really, really good connection, especially on third down. Raleigh Dixon will punt it away. Avery Williams deep for Atlanta. What a kick. Taken at the 10 by Williams. Stays on his feet, up the sideline, and then finally forced out of bounds, and a late flag is thrown. I wonder if they're going to call a late hit out of bounds. Looked like he was still trying to fight for yards. Now Arthur Smith praised. During a return, personal foul, unnecessary roughness against the kicking team, number 37. That 15-yard penalty will be added to the results of the play. First down, timeout. That's on the rookie, Gary Brightwell. A look at that last pass attempt from Jones. Giants punted, and now good field position for the Falcons. On the green, and as he was getting tackled, you know, Brightwell goes and hits him again. Now, I don't agree with that call by the officials. Falcons gain 15 yards due to the flag. Pass is incomplete intended for Zacchaeus. Second and 10. Yeah, Matt Ryan rushed that a little bit. He had more time than he thought. He went through his progression and kind of just rushed that pass a little bit to uh, Zacchaeus. And, you know, now brings up, you, you can say obvious pass, but the way Arthur Smith has been going, this is an obvious rundown for the Atlanta Falcons. Got the heavy package in there. Second and 10, play action. Ryan under pressure, chased by Peppers, gets rid of it. Catch is made by the tight end, Lee Smith, for a short game, pick up of three. Jabril Peppers nearly got to Matt Ryan, third down and seven. Now the Giants bringing in their speed package. Matt Ryan likes Kyle Pitts in this scenario. I want to see Leonard Wims, number 99, defensive tackle for the Giants. He's going to be at a three technique. I want to see how he gets after the offensive line. Going to be down in there. I want to see what he does getting pressure. Third down and seven. Falcons bus get to midfield. Ryan's pass is caught by Ridley, but not enough. <laughs> Stop three yards shy by McKinney and Bradbury. And this is Calvin Ridley in the middle. As he goes across the field, they like these crossing routes, and then he's going to pivot right back out. But look at the gang tag. Look at the run, the swarm by that Giants defense to prevent the first down. That is great effort. McKinney, Bradbury, they're all jumping in. Great effort, great swarm by that defense. Three Atlanta possessions, three punts. C.J. Board back deep for the Giants. Fair catch called for at the 14-yard line. Under a minute remaining in the first quarter here at MetLife Stadium. Now this from Progressive. Are here. For new homeowners, a football game can really bring out the parent in them. It's smart we park near the exit. Absolutely. Ooh, there you go. That way, let's put away the parking talk maybe for a minute. Parking is where the money is, though. You it imagine is. what yeah, this place pulls oh, in on parking alone? All right, no more talking about parking lots. 
A lot of these are compact spots. It's not pretty. Progressive can't protect you from becoming your parents, but we can protect your home and auto when you bundle with us. We still planning to head out around the third quarter? Let's not talk about leaving before we're actually at the game. <laughs> those commercials are great, Kenya. I love those commercials. We'll have some more for you later. I know. I need to check myself just in case. I'm laughing. I might be turning into my parents. I got to be careful. <laughs> Giant start from the 14-yard line. Jones rolling right. Pass incomplete. Eric Harris getting a piece of it. Second and ten. Eric Harris does a really good job. Almost. He got both hands on. He could have had a pick on that. I see him jumping afterwards. That was a nice play. I know he wanted the interception, but puts him backed up. Second and ten. You hold him here. Create some field position for your offense. Hey, Walsh Kelly! Walsh Kelly! Walsh Kelly! Walsh Kelly! Omaha! My son! There's Barkley. Cuts to the outside. Saquon Barkley picks up the first down. Now to the 29-yard line. Gain of 15. And there's something that makes Saquon so electric. It's his ability to bounce the football. He gets down in there. He presses the hole and then now bounces. Foyer has no chance. Number 54, Eric Harris almost missed that tackle because, boy, he was going to be out the gates with that play. What's that? Hey, Warrior Jersey. Warrior Jersey. Warrior Jersey. Warrior Jersey. Hey, hey, go. Omaha. What's that? From the 29 yard line, it's Eli Penny. On first down of the fullback gauge two. Out to the 31 yard line. As the first. Eli Manning in the house. He will be inducted into the Giants' Ring of Honor, and his number 10 will be taken out of circulation at halftime. And deservedly so. Two times Super Bowl MVP. Went against him a few times. Had some good luck against him, but. Wow, those Super Bowl runs, it does not happen if it wasn't for Eli Manning. Omaha! Speaking of the Mannings, an Omaha call from Daniel Jones. As we begin the second quarter. It didn't have the same production when he would call Omaha. <laughs> At least not that time. Yeah, not that time. First quarter numbers, Falcons only two first downs. They punted three times. I'm sure Pat Graham is very excited to see those numbers. 49 total yards. Ofer on third down. That's winning defense for the Giants. You tell me what you want. He's going to look for Sterling Ch Sterling Shepard on this one. Third down and nine. It's Galladay for a Giants first down. You were thinking Shepard. Jones connects with Galladay for 18 yards. That's right. They were thinking Shepard too. They forget about Galladay. Who they bring he's on the far left they bring pressure with eric harris from the right side go away from the blitz which is smart soft in the zone and it gets an easy first down for the giants from the 48 off the fake to barkley jones complete and shepherd this time with forward progress, picks up another Giants first down to the Atlanta 40. I'm telling you, they're really stretching the field with the receivers, Sterling Shepard on Fabian Moreau, and just sitting in the zone. Just sit there. No chance for Foyer to make a play on that. He, he's too good of a receiver. He's going to stop too suddenly for Foyer to make a play. Seven completions to six different receivers. From the Falcons, 40. It's Barkley up the middle. Gain of three. Marlon Davidson made the tackle. Giants on the move with a 3-0 lead. Following losses to Denver and Washington. And they go no huddle. Again, very encouraging. Giants fans watching Daniel Jones in full command of this offense. He had one of his better games last week in the loss to the Washington football team. Second down and seven. 
Jones pass is broken up. Now that time he was late. TJ Green replacing the injured AJ Terrell. Yeah, Daniel Jones was looking left. Evan Ingram coming back off of injury the past two weeks with a calf injury. He was looking his way, trying to get him the ball. He has to know, once you go back to your second, third progression, your second or third read, you got to spit it out fast. It's almost a blind throw. You can't wait to see if he's open. Third down and seven. Jones' pass is caught, and a nice adjustment. There is a flag. Kadarius Toney, the rookie out of Florida, picks up a first down, but that's going to be on the defense. Let's check with the referee, Adrian Hill. Looks like it is against the Falcons deep. Before the pass, holding defense, number six. That penalty is declined. The play results in a first down. Yeah, you know how I know, Kenny? Because I would have done the same thing. <laughs> he was going against Evan Ingram. And Dante Fowler, he's used to rushing the football as Kadarius Tony makes a good job adjusting the ball there. But I know how tough it is to go against those pass-catching tight ends. Jones rolling right on first down, and then he throws to his left. It's Tony once again, has blockers. So Kadarius Tony, only two receptions over the first two games, and voiced his displeasure, although he said it was not at the play calling. Has receptions on back-to-back -back plays. He's looking good. He's looking good. Earning his keep. Getting him some plays, all positive so far. And that's a really good sign for the Giants offense. You got Sterling Shepard, who we know Daniel Jones loves. Evan Ingram is back. Evan Ingram right here. Sterling Shepard down at the bottom. My guess is they'd like to go down that way for the pass. Second down and three. They keep it on the ground with Barkley. Nice play. Barkley picks up a first down. Sarah. Kenny, you talked about Daniel Jones spreading this ball around. One name we haven't heard called in a little bit is Darius Slayton. I'm told he is out for the rest of this game with the hamstring. He's a guy we didn't even see go down, but we will not see him for the rest of the afternoon, Kenny. Thanks, Sarah. Slayton did have a reception back in the first quarter. Jones is now connected with seven different receivers. And it makes sense. Kadarius Tony now getting more of those touches. Some trouble with the snap. And Jones will fall on it back at the 29-yard line. Working with a new center the last couple of weeks in Billy Price. This drive couldn't get any better for the Giants. They're moving the ball at will. Good run-pass combination, and thankfully it had a good bounce. They didn't get the turnover. Picasso blue! Picasso blue! What? They go from Omaha to Picasso and then back to Omaha. Second down at 21 and Shepard. Tackled at the 24 to Los Angeles. Kurt. So now they're gonna have to answer the art critics after that play. How about Kyler Murphy? No criticizing that one. A one-yard touchdown run. His tenth of the season. Yeah, he's feeling zen right now. 7-0. Cardinals on top of the Jaguars. Kenny? Yeah, thanks, Kurt. Michelangelo a little bit too long <laughs> for the next play call. <laughs> I, I doubt we'll ever hear that call. 20,000 Mike, 20,000 Mike. Hey, John. Hey, Duke. Gates. Third down and 17, and this play is blown dead. False start. Offense, number 39, five-yard penalty, replay, third down. You know, Jonathan, the Giants had their issues in the red zone week one against Denver. This was their second trip inside the 20 on their first possession, the sack by Grady Jarrett. This time he had the bad snap and now a penalty. That's touching the stove, Check, checking to see how hot it is. That's what the offense does, keep touching the stove, self-inflicted wounds, they can't do it with these penalties that they have. 
Again, the drive was so good, so beautiful. And you think, okay, they finally made progress and then kill themselves right now. You know, you're a sack away from almost being out of field goal range. So they have to be very careful on this third down. You had a look at Shepard on the sidelines. Giants have already lost Slayton. On third and long, Jones complete. Down to the 15-yard line and finally taken down at the 13. It's Colin Johnson. So the Giants getting some extra yardage for Graham Gano, who hit from 25 earlier. That's yeah, smart by the Falcons again. Don't give up the first down, third and long. Understanding the situation, knowing that it'll be a field goal. They, they've been in a bend-don't-break type of uh, scenario the first part of this game. Thirty-one yard attempt. Gano has hit thirty-six straight. The NFL record is forty-four to roll by Adam Vinatieri. Gano extends that streak to thirty-seven. Giants again have to settle for a field goal. They lead by six. Sterling Shepard worked on by the Giants medical staff. They have already lost. Wide receiver Darius Slayton, Blake Martinez on the defensive side has been ruled out. And we didn't see Saquon Barkley for four plays, especially down in the red zone, where you want him most. I'd be very concerned from the Giants losing so many key players. This is Keith Smith, short kickoff. Down to the field, Sarah. Well, you mentioned Blake Martinez out, Darius Slayton out, Sterling Shepard. I was right by him when he came off the field. He was grabbing that right hamstring. He went to the bench. He seemed very frustrated. He was shaking his head, and he just walked into the locker room very gingerly. He never took his hand off that right hamstring, guys. Oof. All right, thanks, Sheriff. Daniel Jones is going to miss him on third down. Fortunately, Tony has stepped up. As you watch Sterling Shepard walk out, Eesh. That is not good for the Giants offense. Falcons offense back out of the field, empty backfield. They picked up only two first downs, have punted three times. Take it out to the 28-yard line by Cordero Patterson, a gain of eight. Falcons with some injuries as well heading into this game without a couple of wide receivers. Russell Gage and the rookie out of Arizona State, Frank Darby. James Bradbury is going to be following <coughs> Calvin Ridley the whole time. and He's been put in a tough position, but that's a good matchup. Second down and one. It's Patterson running hard, and Cordero Patterson picks up a first down, a gain of 10. And there goes that. Let's call it a, a kickoff play where you extend that secondary, the, excuse me, the defense, very similar to him running kickoffs, kind of a stretch zone. Arthur Smith called it a mid zone. Spread the ball, spread the defense, and then boom, get it north and south. Smith hit it full back. Here's Patterson. This time, not much. Patterson gains one. Second down and nine upcoming against Patrick Graham's Giants defense. By far the best interview we had on Friday. You talk about energy, passion, wanting to win. More importantly, wanting to put his defense in a great position to win this game. Always entertaining. Second down and nine nearly picked off. Oh, looked like Calvin Ridley slipped and Logan Ryan Almost came up with the pick. Yeah, oh, missed opportunity. Almost had it, but yes, Calvin Ridley kind of stumbled out of his break. Oh, Logan wants that one back. So here we go. Third down. Give me a little two safety action. Two safeties deep. Don't bite on anything low. Tight end pitch split out wide to the right. Ryan under pressure on third down and nine. Slingshot to Ridley, and he picks up a first down and more to the Giants, 40. Yep, Ridley wins that round. It's just a simple under route. 
It's going to be guarded by James Bradbury and simply just going to run away from him. And he's too fast. I, I, I get it. James Bradbury, he's a good player. Really is something special, though. Super explosive. They're going to win that matchup every time if he doesn't have help coming from the other side. Ridley picked up 20. Biggest play of this first half for the Atlanta offense. There's Davis, cuts to the outside. There is a flag. As Davis picks up four. But this one's coming back. Yeah, it looks like holding. Holding offense. Number 81. Ten-yard penalty. Replay. First down. It's on the tight end, Hayden Hurst. Yeah, at the point of attack. Going against Julian Love. And Julian Love has to set the edge. And, yeah, I mean, you grab him by the shoulder pads, way up high. Ref officials can see that. That's an easy one. Easy call. Ball spotted back at midfield. First down and 20. As we approach five minutes remaining. In this first half. Ryan over the middle. It's Ridley. Tate Crowder comes up to make the catch. Gain of four. Calvin Ridley now the primary target. As the Falcons look to replace... Their all-time leading receiver, Julio Jones, now a member of the Tennessee Titans. Who was phenomenal for the Falcons. But I saw the writing on the wall a little bit last year. We had the Falcons game. And watching film on Ridley, I'm like, God, this guy is good, man. He's explosive, runs routes really well. I could see them moving on from Julio. And sure enough, Calvin Ridley, a big part of this offense. Almost 50%, over 50% of the offense goes to him. Second down and 16. It is Ridley again to the Giants' 40. As he gets another catch. First round pick back in 2018. Led the NFL last season with 800-yard games. Hey, I've loved everything about him except he went to Alabama. <laughs> He's a Florida guy. I needed him to stay in Florida, particularly University of Miami. Instead, he goes... Has a phenomenal career at Alabama and a now phenomenal career at the Falcons. It's the only thing I hate about him. We won't let him know. Third down and 10. As Ryan steps up, can't find anyone. Now he throws and it is caught and then dropped. There is a flag. Ryan may have crossed the line of scrimmage before getting rid of the football. Your whole body must cross for a flag to be thrown. As long as any body part is still behind the line of scrimmage, it's a legal forward pass. The result of the play is an incomplete pass. There's no foul on the play. Third down. So the flag has been picked up. It will be fourth down. Yeah. Yes, incomplete pass. Well, Joe's judge, he's going to challenge it. I wonder if... Zach has had control and took those two steps. Let's see. Zacchaeus takes one. I don't know if he ever had control. New York is challenging the ruling on the field of an incomplete pass. So Joe Judge looking for the first successful challenge of his career. Joe Judge challenged the last play. We still await the call from Adrian Hill. Let's welcome in Dean Blandino from Los Angeles. Dean, what did you see? Yeah, so here's the rule. You have to have control, both feet, and then time to perform an act common to the game. Watch the key is here. He's going to control it. He's going to get his left foot down, right foot, and just as that second step comes down, the ball is out. There's no time element. So to me, this is an incomplete pass. 
After review, the ruling on the field stands. Incomplete pass. New York will be charged with their first timeout. All right, thanks very much, Dean. So Adrian Hill agrees. Incomplete pass. Falcons will punt it away. Giants lose a timeout. Joe Judge only challenged once last season. 0 for 1 last year, now 0 for 1 in 2021. So the Falcons cross midfield, but come away with nothing. Four Atlanta possessions, four punts. Downed inside nice the five yard line. Nice play. Perfect placement by Cameron Nizalek. And Cordero Patterson doing it on special teams as well. That's where he made his hay the first part of his career. Goes through two defenders to make sure he gets that ball stopped inside the five yard line. T great team effort by Cordero Patterson. And now let's see what the Falcons defense can do. Stop them here and give Matt Ryan better field position. No Sterling Shepard. Barkley has returned. Off the fake to Barkley. Pass is batted out of the air. Michael, Michael Walker, Walker getting a piece of it. Yeah, he's been getting some time. I noticed they started sprinkling him in, and when he gets in, he makes plays. Really just, he was spotted or, re, or spying, which is watching Daniel Jones. Had Daniel Jones broken the, the pocket, he was going to go in and rush, and that's a nice replay. Good look at the athletic ability of Michael Walker. Giant wideouts on the field are Colin Johnson and C.J. Bourne. They lost Darius Slayton. No Sterling so Shepard. run. Second down and ten. <laughs> they do keep it on the ground, although Board had the nice catch earlier. He did. He did. Just my linebacker instincts. I would have been telling my guys, run. Giants did reach the red zone twice. Held to field goals. Lead the Falcons six nothing. Sterling Shepard's not in. I wouldn't be surprised if Daniel Jones goes back to C.J. Ford or gets Evan Ingram involved. Galladay has not been on the field on this drive either. Third down and six. Jones throws. There is a flag. Jonathan, you called it. It's C.J. Ford. Yeah, it's going to be offensive pass interference, though. Pushed off to gain that separation. T.J. Green filling in for A.J. Terrell. Pass interference, offense, number 18. After this is the goal, replay, third down. Mentioned T.J. Green, he's in for A.J. Terrell, out with the concussion, and I mean, that's it's too obvious. Full extension with the arms, pushes off. Easy call for the officials. Fifth Giants penalty. Kadarius Tony in as the third wideout. So no Shepard, no Galladay, no Slayton. Four down and nine. Jones from his end zone fires, and that's broken up. Tony was the antenna receiver. Isaiah Oliver got a piece of it. Oh boy, was he lucky that that was incomplete. That could have easily been picked and gone the other way for pick six. Secondary is literally just sitting at the stick. So you watch all of them. Their eyes are on Daniel Jones. And woof, boy, great break. Fabian Moreau breaking on the ball. Eric Williams is there too. Daniel Jones got lucky. He got away with one on that play. Ronnie Dixon deep in his end zone. As the Giants go three and out. Play clock winding down. Before the play clock expires, timeout, New York. They're second. This will be a 30 second timeout. Lost their first timeout on the unsuccessful challenge. 
Tomorrow on Fox, the blackout continues on a thrilling 9-1-1. TV's high-octane drama is back, wilder than ever. Don't miss a gripping all-new 9-1-1 tomorrow night at 8, 7 central on Fox. Coming up at halftime, Eli Manning will be inducted into the Ring of Honor here at MetLife Stadium. His number 10 will be retired. Daniel Jones replaced Eli as the Giants' starting quarterback two seasons ago. Injury issues on both sides of the ball for the Giants today. Williams is deep. He will field it at the 47 across midfield to the Giants' 43-yard line. So excellent field position for Arthur Smith's Atlanta Falcons. A look at the new coaches, Jonathan, around the National Football League. So far, only three wins. It has been tough sledding for the new coaches. I would say this for all of them. It's first implementing your culture. Then when you have the foundation, you want to see the success come later on in the season. At first, they're kind of figuring out the team, the players. Okay, what are we really about? Who is this coach about? As you see Arthur Smith, they have to really trust of what you're preaching, what you're talking about, and then it'll show up in the wins down the road. This only the fourth play. They will run in Giants territory. It's Davis. As the clock winds down, and we hit the two-minute warning in East Rutherford, New Jersey, with the Giants leading the Falcons by six. And Jimmy, Kyler Murray, three rushing touchdowns in his first three games. Justin Fields at the helm for the Bears. Giants leading the Falcons. Six-nothing. Atlanta with all three timeouts. Second and seven, 41-yard line. Davis out of the backfield, down the sideline. Picks up a Falcons first down to the Giants, 29. Minute of 12. Keith down to Smith a minute 54. Got Cordero Patterson coming back in as we look at Julius Peppers, who's been a really good player for Patrick Graham and his Giants defense. Plenty of time for the Falcons, this two-minute drive. That's why they're able to set up the run, or what looks like a run could do easily do a play action and get Kyle Pitts, their phenomenal rookie, out in the, out in the open for some catches. Off the fake to Patterson. Oh, big hit and a flag. He caught it. Zacchaeus made the catch. McKinney with the hit. And a penalty marker throw, a gain of 14. Looks like McKinney tried to keep his head out of the tackle. Personal foul, unnecessary roughness, defense, number 29. That penalty will be first 15 yards from the previous spot, automatic first down. I mean, one, how brave is that as the key is understanding he's going to take a hit. It looked like shoulder to shoulder. Penalties continue to be an issue. That's the seventh committed by the Giants in this first half. Yeah, and I would say if I'm Joe Judge, I would accept something like that. It's the false starts holdings that he can't accept. First and goal for Atlanta. Ryan complete. Ridley forced out of bounds at the Giants four. A minute 42 left. Falcons have all their timeouts. They can literally do what they want. It's frankly not even a two-minute scenario for them. They have so much time and all their timeouts. Falcons send in an extra blocker, number 69, Jason Spriggs. Look, I hope this is a, a setup. 
Well, I was hoping for a setup for Pitts, but he's not in the game right now. Second and goal. Ryan looking for Ridley. Nice coverage. With Bradbury defending. Yeah. Bradbury, he has he has a tough job. Timeout taken by the Falcons. This is press man in the red zone. Gets no better than this. Your best on my best. And that is great coverage. Looked like white on rice, man. That was good. What's coming up at halftime, Kurt? Coming up on the Verizon Halftime, we'll see how Justin Herbert and the Chargers are doing against Mahomes and the Chiefs and check in with the Colts as they look for their first win of the season against the Titans. Don't disappear. The Verizon Halftime is next. Ball never came down. Where is it? It, it would have been so great if it just landed on his head. <laughs> Bar <laughs> Excellent hang time. Just bang him on the head as soon as he comes back over to us. All right, third and goal for the Falcons from the four-yard line. All right, here we go. Pitts down at the bottom. Going in motion. Let's get creative, Arthur Smith. See what he's going to do. Oh. Timeout taken by the Giants. They're third. Timeout, New York. They're third and final. This will be a 30-second timeout. I like that timeout. You let the Falcons come out. You see what they're going to do. You even saw the motion. Kind of get a feel for what they might, where they might try to attack the defense. Call timeout. Now you can set up, and you see them switching personnel groups. They take out Austin Johnson. They bring in Lorenzo Carter, number 59. Want to get more of a pass rush in this situation. Three receivers plus the tight end picks. Patterson in the backfield. Ryan on third down. Over the middle to the end zone. Zacchaeus touchdown. The Plainfield, New Jersey native, Olavide Zacchaeus is the recipient career passing TD number 350 for Matt Ryan. Love the design. Arthur Smith, he spreads everyone out. That whole defense gets spread out because you have Pitts on one side, Patterson going in motion the other side, and they absolutely forget about Zacchaeus. Hooks up right over the football for Matt Ryan for the touchdown. Boy, did they silence this crowd. Jeez. I can hear a pin drop, Kenny. Young Way Koo adds the extra point. Falcons have taken the lead. Ryan to Zacchaeus. The end zone late in the second quarter. Ryan to Zacchaeus. They had a short field, six plays, 44 yards. But very effective. Very effective. Giants will start from their 25-yard line. A minute and a half remaining in the second quarter. Kenny Albert along with Jonathan Vilma. Red zone has been the difference in this first half. It's missed opportunities. You're right. The Giants have been down there. Unfortunately, they had penalties, sacks, missed opportunities, had to settle for field goals. Atlanta gets down there one time, scores a touchdown, and that's the difference in the game. 7-6 lead for Matt Ryan and the Falcons. Giants with two trips inside the 20. They've also lost some key players due to injury. First and 10, 25-yard line as Jones swings it out to Barkley. And he will lose a yard taken down 
At the 24 by Isaiah Oliver. Kenny Galladay is back on the field for the Giants. We did not see him during that last series. Jones over the middle on second down. It's complete. Evan Ingram out to the 38. And then the Falcons come away with the football. It's Oliver. That ball was out. He intentionally targeted that football. He got it out before Evan Ingram went down. The ruling on the field is Atlanta ball. Please reset the game clock to one minute. Isaiah Oliver stripping it away from Evan Engram. What a phenomenal job and changing momentum. You're thinking 7-6, all right, they may go down, possibly a field goal for the Giants. Isaiah Oliver makes a great play, just targeted that football, and Evan Engram, he had no chance on that. Look at that, doesn't even go for the tackle, just goes for a strip, gets the ball out. Now Atlanta with a chance to put two touchdowns in less than two minutes to go in this half. Giants deferred at the start of the game, so they will get the ball first in the third quarter. You talked about the missed opportunities for the Giants. Two trips inside the 20. Key injuries, penalties, and now a turnover. It's just getting... Bad to worse for the Giants. They they started off strong, had the momentum, crowd was in it, and it's just gotten worse and worse for them. Marlon Davidson is the injured Falcon. So Atlanta with a huge opportunity. There's Oliver who came up with the strip. Atlanta with two timeouts remaining, 60 seconds on the clock. What I appreciate about Joe Judge, he was very frank and honest with us. Oh, he said, yeah, we could be one and one, and I could blame you know, the offsides penalty, but no, that's not it. It's the turnovers that are killing us. Situational football is killing us. All turnovers automatically reviewed, so Adrian Hill uh, taking another look. Yeah, but they know. He knows. Evan Ingram, he's looking. At, he understands. But uh, you're right, Jonathan. We asked Joe Judge about the Dexter Lawrence offside at yep. the end of the game. And he told us it's never one play. We made too many mistakes. We can't beat ourselves. And as you alluded to right at the start, great quote from Joe Judge. He said, he told the team we have to stop touching the plate to see if it's hot. Yep. And After review, the ruling on the field stands. First down, Atlanta. Okay, we, we watch what happened from last week, and then now it's carrying over. You know, that the disappointing part is that those things are not getting corrected. You know, protecting the football, you know, silly penalties, it's not getting corrected. The two trips into the red zone held to a couple of field goals, the turnover, the injuries. And the penalties. And now the Falcons looking to add to their lead. From the Giants, 36. Ryan was under pressure, tried to connect with Cordero Patterson incomplete. Good coverage by the secondary. If, if the Giants would have gotten a sack, it definitely would have been a coverage sack. That was good pressure. Or excuse me, good coverage by the secondary and then getting a little pressure. Leonard Williams getting in there at the end. Forcing that incompletion and you talk about a, a big momentum shift if the Giants can hold the Falcons to either a punt or a field goal. That'd be huge for the Giants. Second and ten. Ryan over the middle. Davis. Brought down at the 35-yard line by Peppers. Look at the push. Leonard Williams getting in there, closing the pocket down. That's just as unsettling as having, you know, a defensive end come flying in. That's very unsettling to 
feel the walls closing in on you if you're Matt Ryan. Hard to make a good throw. And that's where the that's where the defense needs to step up. Get more pressure from that defensive front. Make it a lot easier on the secondary. Clock continues to run. Falcons elect not to call timeout. They have two. Third down and nine. Ryan hit, lost the football. And the Giants have recovered. That's the rookie Aziz Ojolari coming from the left side. And the awareness to go for the football. Don't get the man. Go get the football. Goes up and under on Caleb McGarren. That was a tremendous play. Again, going back to good momentum shift. You can take that into the locker room now. That's a, that's a feel good. I feel good about that defensively and as a team. Ojolari, the Georgia native. Second round pick out of the University of Georgia. First giant in franchise history with a sack in his first three NFL games. Some momentum for the Giants. They will get the ball first. Eli Manning and his family will head out onto the field as the Giants will induct him into the Ring of Honor and retire. Once a giant, always a giant. I'm glad I'm only a giant. Thank you very much. Today's game flow brought to you by Progressive. As we welcome you back, get set for the start of the third quarter with the Atlanta Falcons leading the New York Giants 7-6. You had a look at number 10, Eli Manning, inducted into the Giants Ring of Honor moments ago. His number 10 will never be worn again in the history of this franchise. Nor should it. Uh, I remember we were in the same draft class going against him when we were practicing training camp and then watching his progression as he got better as a quarterback. Played against him a couple times and you knew he was going to be really good. And what he did for the Giants and how he has performed, not just on the field, off the field, caring and representing this organization, he deserves to have his, his jersey retired. Drafted back in 2004 by the Chargers, traded that day to the Giants and went on to win two Super Bowls, two-time Super Bowl MVP. And now he will watch as the Giants look to come back. They had a 6-0 lead, Falcons with a late touchdown, and then Atlanta was on the move once again, but the Giants came up with the takeaway. Yeah, the defense, they turned it up a little bit for the Giants. The Falcons have been playing well when they needed to and executed in the red zone. Now we need to see who's going to execute better when it comes to being in the red zone and not having those unforced errors. Giants will get the ball first to begin the second half. C.J. Board has some trouble fielding the kickoff as we head down to the field. Check in with Sarah. Kenny Arthur Smith told me he was really happy with how his defense played, but he says his offense has to sustain drives. He said they have to play better situational football. As for Joe Judge, you know he has harped on penalties all week with this team, and he said this is not something that we can leave in the officials' hands. He told us his message to the team was start fast, start strong, and finish drives. Kenny? All right, thanks very much, Sarah. Giants lost Darius Slayton, Blake Martinez. Sterling Shepard does not return. Kenny Galladay is on the field, sat out a series back in the second quarter. On first down, it's Saquon Barkley up the middle. Out to the 20-yard line for a gain of six. Barkley in the first half, averaged four yards per carry, had a 15-yard run. Daniel Jones, 13 of 19, connected at Jonathan with eight different receivers. And I would like to see more Saquon Barkley that was a nice, positive five, six-yard run. Keep doing that. Wear down this front seven for the Atlanta Falcons. Second down and four as Barkley looks to spin out of trouble. And then he's bet by Foye Oluokon. Yeah, you can't dance back there. Now, Foye makes a great play. He penetrates. And as soon as he goes, he's getting down into the, into the backfield. And as soon as he shoots his gun, 
Saquon Barkley can't dance. Now you have to shoot your gun. If you're Saquon, understand, I need to just now pick up as many yards as I can before it becomes a negative play. Backs him up into a third and long. Loss of three. Third down and seven. Galladay slot to the right. Giants must get to the 24-yard line for a first down. Right in the middle. Jones steps up and fires, and the catch is made. Nice catch. Colin Johnson, his second reception, gain of 13 at a Giants first down. Yeah, that's a, a nice catch. Colin Johnson falling away with the great concentration, almost bobbled it, makes sure to corral it, doesn't hit the ground. Good concentration. That was, that was really good. That was impressive. Johnson spent last season with the Jaguars. Seeing some extended playing time due to the injuries. On first down, this is Galladay. Out across the 40, gain of 11. Another Giants first down. And you notice they want to test T.J. Green, the backup in for A.J. Terrell. A.J. Terrell had a concussion last week, didn't pass protocol. So they've been attacking that right side of the Falcons' defense, leaving Fabian Moreau on one side. T.J. TJ Green's going to have to step up. They're going to keep going his way. Giants with three wide receivers. And the pass over the middle is incomplete. Jones looking for the tight end. Evan Ingram, second and ten upcoming. Evan Ingram with that costly fumble to end the half there. It was a little low and behind him. But he hasn't really gotten himself into this game. Uh, maybe it's the rust, but he doesn't look like himself just yet. Coming off the calf injury, had two receptions in the first half. Second down and 10, Jones under pressure, he escapes. Still looking downfield, now it's caught at the Falcons 44 yard line. Colin Johnson again. Oh. All the defenders are saying that it was incomplete. Oh, the ref comes back in, says it was incomplete. And All right, so they'll bring it back. Origi initially ruled a completion. Great job. Officials get together. It will be third down and ten. Yeah, it was a great job of Daniel Jones getting away from the sack. Ball hit the ground. Yeah, clearly hit the ground. No doubt about it. All right, well, look, it's a third and ten. Much better than a third and 16. Good job, Daniel Jones, avoiding that sack. Play clock winding down. Giants get the snap away. Jones pulls it in. Tries to take off, and then he's tackled after a gain of just two, so the Giants will punt it away. This great defensive coverage. This is a two safeties. I, I usually talk about two high safety look. Great coverage, TJ Green plastering, Deion Jones plastering Evan Ingram as well. You know, Daniel Jones had nowhere to go with that football. That was really good defense. Arthur Smith is right. The defense has played well. Definitely played well enough to win this game. Williams deep, Dixon punting from his 32-yard line. End over end kick. Williams lets it bounce, feels it, and then goes down. At the 17, Falcons defense holds Atlanta. Matt Ryan's career numbers against the Giants coming into this one. We asked him about playing against Eli Manning. He said, I'm still mad about the 24-2 game, the wild card matchup back in January 2012. But he did say Eli's a good friend, one of the most clutch players in the biggest situations. And now Ryan in trouble. Down he goes. Leonard Williams comes up with the sack, his first of the season. Now, Leonard Williams can go and make sure he buys drinks for everyone in that secondary. This is definitely a covered sack. Uh, that's too easy. Adore Jackson on Kyle Pitts. That was too easy. And then you know, Lee Smith, he's doing all he can. But Leonard Williams is a big man. 
Nice sack, and he should go thank that secondary. That was good coverage all around by the secondary. Career high, 11 and a half sacks for Williams last season. Loss of six. Second down and 16. Ryan over the middle, and that could not be handled by the tight end, Hayden Hurst. Take Crowder defending. Every Wednesday, the mass Singer brings you the biggest superstars. The new season is here. Watch the crazy reveals right now. Catch an all-new eye-popping episode every Wednesday at 8, 7 Central on Fox. Third down at 16. Ryan to Patterson. Not enough. Down at the 22. Falcons will punt it away. Nice defensive series by the Giants. And Falcons smartly saying, look, we're not going to force the issue. We're backed up. Let's just gain some yards, gain what we can, punt the football, let our defense play again, and then hopefully get better field position on this next series. Peppers deep. Nizelec out of Columbia University, boots it away from the 12. Take it at the 20 by Jabril Peppers. Nice return. There is a flag. 58-yard punt, 19 on the return. During the kick, unsportsmanlike conduct against the kicking team. Number 13 went out of bounds. That's on Christian Blake. Big sack by Williams, Giants offense, back out. And now carrying it over in this game against the Giants, Grady Jarrett with the sack. Almost had the interception, nice pass breakup. The constant pressure, guys getting in the backfield, whether it's in the run game or the passing game. Daniel Jones running for his life as this defense has been ratcheting it up just a little bit each quarter. Falcons allowed 80 points over the first two games. They've held the Giants to a pair of field goals. Best starting field position for the Giants. It's Barkley across midfield, first down and more. Saquon Barkley finally forced out of bounds at the Falcons 36. It's a gain of 23, but there is a flag. Ineligible man downfield, offense. Number 71, five yard penalty, replay, first down. The right guard, Will Hernandez. He was clearly down the field way too fast. That erases a 23-yard pickup. It's the eighth Giants penalty. And now it allows the Falcons to sit back in more of a, a coverage defense since it's first and long. First and 15. Jones throws. It's Johnson. Colin Johnson makes the catch at the 48-yard line. That's a nice pickup. Puts you back into a second and six. Very, very manageable. Giants muddle huddling. They bring back Kyle Rudolph, Caden Smith, and Gary Brightwell in the backfield. Omaha, what's up? This is Brightwell. Brightwell spins close to a first down. The rookie sixth round pick out of Arizona. His first NFL carry. Stop just short. Third down and one as we approach eight minutes remaining in the third quarter. Kenny Albert, Jonathan Vilma, Sarah Walsh from 
MetLife Stadium with the Atlanta Falcons leading the New York Giants 7-6. Giants without some of their top wideouts due to injury. Jones on the sneak. Did he get it, Kenny? It will depend on the spot. I think second effort he got it. Initially, it looked like he got stopped, and there it is. Jones picks up the first down. Time for a game break to Los Angeles. We go, Kurt. All right, New Orleans led New England 14-3 at halftime. First play of the second half didn't go the Patriots' way, but it did for New Orleans. Malcolm Jenkins pick six off the hands of John o. Smith. 34-yard score, and it's 21-3 just like that. Kenny, Jonathan, and Sarah. All right, thanks, Kurt. Saints looking for their second win. They'll host the Giants next week. You set it down for New York. And that pass could not be handled by Barkley with Deion Jones defending. Giants offense, they just seem a little flat. They're walking around. And I know Judge and Jason Garrett, they're trying to pick up this offense with this metal huddle, pick up the tempo, the pace. I think it's the players themselves. They have to get themselves going. Well, Sterling Shepard and Darius Slayton ruled out as Barkley takes it inside the 40 to the Atlanta 39-yard line. Third down and three. Stephen Means shaking up. Back on his feet, chatting with the Falcons medical staff. Yeah, he's still going to go. have to go out for a play. Good thing is he's jogging off on his own. That's a good sign for the Falcons defense. And you have this third and third and three long three yards. And, you know, the, the Giants have been actually pretty good at converting on these third downs. They have the option with Saquon Barkley. And then C.J. Board has really come alive for the Giants offense as well. Play clock at one after Jones changed the play. On third down and three, firing downfield too far for Colin Johnson. There is a flag. And you can hear somebody asking right before the snap, what is the play? What is the play? <laughs> That's not a good sign. Holding offense, number 68. That penalty is declined. Fourth down. No, not a good sign when somebody is no, asking so you that question. My, my assumption, I'm not going to say it was Ben Bredesen, even though he got called for the holding. But they figured, let me just hold on for dear life. If I don't know the play, let me at least not let anybody go in and hit my quarterback. Wow, Atlanta Falcons defense is really starting to take over this game. They have really imposed their will at the front. Dixon punting from midfield. Williams deep. Oh, what a nice. play. Nice. Keon Cross it hustling downfield to keep it out of the end zone. Eli Manning was inducted into the Giants' ring of honor. His number 10 will never be worn again in the history of the franchise. Threw a couple of passes to Super Bowl heroes David Tyree and Mario Manningham as we welcome in Eli's teammate for four seasons, the Hall of Famer Michael Strahan joining us from the studio in Los Angeles. Michael, you are already in the Giants' ring of honor, but your number, of course, will be retired in late November, number 92. What was going through your mind as you watched that halftime ceremony? I'm, I'm happy. Well, Jonathan and Kenny, good to see you both, by the way. Great job calling this game. I'm just happy to, to see Eli out there, to see, the, you know, the guys we played with out there to support him. I wish I could be there, but obviously I'm here in the studio, you know, working, working with you guys. So it's just great to see him out there. Hopefully this team, this current team, can pull out a win for him today. Yeah, we will see. But, you know, Strand, I want to know, where, when was that moment? that you knew Eli was the guy. He was your quarterback, and he was going to win you that Super Bowl. When was that moment? 
Well, at the end of the game, the Super Bowl. <laughs> Before that, man, I mean, Eli used to scare me because he, he would show no emotion. He would just go out there and just sling it around. And every time he'd throw it, you'd hold your breath. And he, uh, thank goodness, threw it to the right guy more times than not. And, you know, I, I, he replaced Kurt Warner. And I'll never forget, I said, why would we take Kurt Warner out to put in this young, unproven player? But he soon gained the respect of everybody in that locker room. And obviously, he's a great player, two-time Super Bowl MVP, two-time Super Bowl champion, and uh, the Giants legend. Second down at five for the Falcons. They lead the Giants 7-6. From the 21-yard line, it is Davis. Out to the 30, hard to bring him down. And he's close to another uh, Falcons first down. And uh, Michael, of course, Super Bowl 42. Here's the big play as Eli escapes, stays on his feet. And take us back to what was going through your mind on the sidelines as David Tyree made that catch. Well, I literally was thinking, don't throw the ball to the middle of the field. I mean, that's the first thing you know. He did it, and David Tyree made the catch of his life. And, but, but Eli was this guy. You saw him with the throw to Manningham as well in, in 2011, and that Super Bowl, under the most intense pressure and in, in, in intense situations, he just showed up. He always showed up. He always made the plays that were needed in the biggest moments, and, and that's why... You know, the Giants are two-time Super Bowl winners. If it weren't for Eli making those plays, getting out of the sack in 2007, beating an undefeated Patriots team, then beating the Patriots again in 2011 with that throw to Manningham, um, history is not what we know it of it to be right now. And Eli Manning would probably um, have somebody else wearing that number 10 jersey if it weren't for those two plays. Second right. down and seven coming up for the Falcons. And three weeks ago, Michael, Eli and a couple of... Your other former teammates surprised you on the set of Good Morning America. That's how you found out uh, they came out. They were wheeled out in a couple of boxes, right? That's when you found out that your number will be retired. Yeah, they, they surprised me. I, I'm not big on surprises, but they got me pretty good, good with that one, man. And, and I'm honored by it. I, you know, it's, it's amazing to have played in one place for 15 years. And, and to know that no one will wear that jersey and it's not so much you know, the ego thing is more just like what you meant to the organization. And, and, and obviously, to me, it was bigger than just the Giants. It was more about New York City as a whole. So I am a um, through and through New York Giant and New Yorker. And I'm just glad to have that honor um, given to me by the team. And I'm looking forward to November 28th when they retire my number. Well, I know Michael was keeping an eye on the Giants' defense on that play as the Falcons will punt it away. Uh, Michael, thanks for taking a couple of minutes. You actually held the franchise record for most games played in Giants history until Eli Manning broke that mark. But uh, enjoy the rest of this well, one. Well, you know, you're, you're Kenny, he's the quarterback. They don't get beat up every day in Thank practice. You, they don't get exactly. beat That's up the, in the way game to bring it up. They have a good Thank offensive you. line. Yes. You know, my, my record is what it is. So Your record you know, was much I harder mean. to attain. Yes, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. spoken, spoken like a true linebacker. All right, Michael, uh, right, congratulations you on your honor as well. We look forward to November 28th. The great Michael Strahan, Hall of Famer, our colleague for many years at Fox Sports, and yes, he played the second most games in Giants franchise history, trailing only Eli Manning. Giants D nearly coming up with the takeaway. Eli Manning honored at halftime. One-point game, miscues the story for the Giants. Two red zone trips held to field goals, a giveaway, seven penalties. They've also lost three key players for the game due to injury. From the 29 on first down, Jones will take off, and he will slide and picks up a first down, gain of 11. Uh, talking about the miscues, Kenny, and, you know, it starts with busted assignment up front with the easy sack, then almost having a fumble here, and that, that was on a really good drive that they had in that series, and then Evan Ingram over here with the fumble. You look at these plays, aside from Evan Ingram, Saquon with the frustration, they were about to score. They were in the fringe area, red zone area. That's where they need to capitalize. Up the middle, Barkley for a gain of four. You know, we joked with Michael Strahan about the fact that Eli passed him on the game's play list, but 
You talk about the durability. 210 consecutive starts at the quarterback position. For the amount of hits that he took, and when it's cold, I know people say, oh, the weather. Listen, when you're playing in the cold, it hurts. Every time, every tackle, every hit, for him to be able to do that is phenomenal. Barkley, first down, Giants. Wrapped up from behind by Taquan Graham. After picking up 12, and the Giants are in Falcons territory. Yeah, I'm glad they're recognizing, hey, we have number two draft pick. He is pretty phenomenal. Saquon Barkley, get him in space. There's no one that's going to be able to stay with him one-on-one -on -one in space. He's too good and too elusive. I like the play calling from the Giants. Omaha! Omaha! New set of downs from the Atlanta 44. It's Barkley once again. And Jonathan, uh, not only was Eli so durable, but of course uh, Peyton Manning, 265 starts, Dad Archie, 139, member of the uh, Saints alumni, along with you and your teammates. That's a good group, and I remember watching Peyton, and he refused to take a big hit. Second down at seven, Colin Johnson has become a reliable target for Daniel Jones this afternoon. Peyton was so good. He would just take the sack knowing, look, I can make that back up. I got Reggie Wayne on one side, Marvin Harrison on the other side, Dallas Clark at tight end. I'll get that extra 5, 10 yard from this sack. I'm not worried about that. Peyton received his Hall of Fame ring at halftime in Indianapolis last week, so... Busy couple of weeks Omaha. for the Manning brothers. They'll be working tomorrow night as well. Eli Penny to the 31-yard line. Third quarter has come to an end. A look at Archie Payton. Giants approaching 100 yards on the ground. Daniel Jones, their leading rusher heading into the game today. 45 on 12 carries for Saquon Barkley. Giants on the move, trailing by one as we begin the fourth quarter. Second down and six. Barkley spins. Gains a yard on the second effort, Sarah. You know, Kenny, I asked Saquon this week about what he says to those people that expect him to be the Saquon of old, and he kind of laughed. He said, look, I want Saquon to be Saquon. He told me that this is about getting into the flow, getting his mind and brain caught up with his feet and body, making cuts and trusting it, and he said he's getting there. He says he's taking extra care of that knee each and every day, and Kenny, that'll continue, he said, throughout his career. Thanks, Sarah. Third down and five. Giants must get to the 24 for a first down. Jones complete. Johnson, it's close. They give it to him. First down, and to Sarah's point, what Saquon is referring to is now the maintenance of his knee. He's going to constantly have to stretch it, ice it down, warm it up everything that needs to be done and I know this from watching a Drew Brees with the shoulder had a major shoulder injury before going to the Saints and every week he would prepare not only mentally but physically get that shoulder ready during practice and for the games. Omaha, hey, whiskey red, boom. Whiskey red, boom. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Omaha, I'm outside. Time out. Take it by the Giants. Timeout. New York. Play clock was winding down. Giants use their first timeout with 13 and a half remaining. Coming up next, America's Game of the Week. Tom Brady and the Bucks, Matthew Stafford and the Rams. Some of you will see the Seahawks and the Vikings right here on Fox. And the Fox Sports app. Check local listings for the game in your area. So Eli Manning on it earlier today. And the guy that he beat twice in the Super Bowl, 
14 seasons ago and 10 seasons ago, still going strong. Yeah, every Patriots hater loves Eli Manning for beating him in the Super Bowl. But we just watched Matthew Stafford last week against the Colts. Man, he is good, and that team is really good. I can't wait to see that game this afternoon. Stafford off to a terrific start in Los Angeles. Jones fires. It's complete. Taken inside the 10-yard line. Down to the 8 by Kenny Galladay. 16-yard connection. I'm loving Kenny Galladay understanding that he's going to go and sit right up into the zone. You see that they put Fabian Moreau in a bind, right? Kadarius Toney is going up for a seven route to the corner, and then Galladay comes right behind, right in front, sits down for that first down. Jones, end zone, flag. Intended for Galladay with Moreau defending. Oh, I, I don't know that. Let me see the replay, but Moreau. That's interference. Defense, number 22, the foul third in zone, the ball will be placed at the one yard line, automatic first down. Look, I'll say that both players have every right to that football. And when I see Moreau looking back at the ball, Galladay looking back at the ball, and they're both trying to make a play, you have to let it go. You, you can't call that in that situation. Giants send in three tight ends and a fullback. Lady, it's it. First and goal, Barkley. Over the top, touchdown! And this is why you draft them number two Overall, look at the burst, the explosion, getting over the top. Grady Jarrett tries to meet him, and he clearly crosses the line for a touchdown. Now the Giants going for two. Two-point conversion attempt. Jones dives. He's in. Daniel Jones showing his toughness. Look at that. Wow. That's a D-lineman he ran over. Daniel Jones wants it. First touchdown since the last game of the 2019 season. And then Daniel Jones with the two point conversion. Giving this crowd a little life. They got into it. It's a very nice, methodical drive. Short kickoff as they look to keep it away from Patterson, but he came up to field it. And now the Falcons offense back out onto the field, trailing by seven. And Daniel Jones lowering the boom on Grady Jerry. You do not see that often. That's supposed to be win, defensive tackle every time, but Daniel Jones showing how tough he is and wanting it. I mean, the only way I can explain it is like me running you over, Kenny. I just, <laughs> oh, I just want it. Oh. <laughs> I don't think that would be too much of an issue. <laughs> First and 10 from the 28, it's Davis. I think the matchup of myself and Kurt Menefee uh, might be a little closer than <laughs> Albert and Velma Kurt. Who would win that? I'm going to be like Velma and I'd run you over too. Trevor Lawrence looking for any help he can get right now because it's a struggle against Arizona. Byron Murphy, second pick of the day against Lawrence. That was a pick six. They lead it 24-19. Sounds like a challenge. Cordero <laughs> Patterson, not much. Knocked out of bounds by Lorenzo Carter. After the game, we're putting on our pads. <laughs> Flying to LA, we're gonna do this. We're gonna do it. 
You might not be able to catch me heading out of the booth. <laughs> Third down and eight. Well, here goes the crowd. They're up into it. Giants have only allowed the one touchdown, a couple of sacks. Uh, now a timeout taken by the Giants. That's their second. Leading the Falcons, 14-7, fourth quarter, back in a moment. How excited and tense defensive coordinator Patrick Graham is, and you see him, he is getting after it. This down, this series is too important to mess up on a mentor, and you see, you see him getting after those guys because he wants to win, and he wants them right for this long third down. Third down and eight for Matt Ryan on the Falcons from the 30-yard line, trailing by seven. Ryan over the middle, it's the tight end, Pitts. His first catch today at Atlanta, first down, gain of 10. What an important catch. All the momentum on the Giants' side, third and long, and Pitts is going against a corner. Baby Moreau is a good corner in this league, and you see how he cuts his route and makes it very narrow on a 90 degree instead of rounding it, allowing Moreau to get underneath it. Nice throwing catch by Pitts and Matt Ryan. The Dory Jackson defending. First and 10 from the 40, here's Patterson. Patterson gains a couple out to the 42-yard line. Yeah, Dory Jackson, 22 for the Giants. Under 11 minutes remaining. Giants have taken the lead on a Saquon Barkley touchdown and Daniel Jones two-point conversion. Falcons over their first two games plus this one. How about that, Jonathan? They've been outscored in the fourth quarter, 38-0. There's no way to sugarcoat it. That's bad football. You can't win games that way. 20 zip by the Bucks last week. Wide open. It's Patterson across midfield. Ooh. Fins off Logan Ryan and still going. We talked about the size and the strength of Cordero Patterson. And he quiets the crowd with a gain of 26 yards. Yeah. What happens is the Giants, they decide they're going to go on a fire zone. And that allows... Cordero Patterson to get outside free on a free release by the run, at the running back position and I mean that's not fair you, you have no chance if you're Logan Ryan this is a big man coming at you and boom oh get off me going to gains the yards from the Giants 31 they hand it off to Patterson gains a couple tackled from behind by Austin Johnson, second down at eight. Coming up for Atlanta. Matt Ryan for the first time in his career working with an offensive-minded head coach. So many seasons with Mike Smith and then Dan Quinn, both terrific head coaches, but they were defensive guys. And Ryan told us the other day, I spent a lot more time with Arthur than the previous head coaches going over the game plan. He's at all the meetings. He asked me what I'm comfortable with. It was very comforting for Matt Ryan. Second down and eight off the fake to Davis. Ryan sets, swings it out. Davis makes the catch. He stayed in bounds, stays on his feet. Down the sideline, gained some extra yardage. It was very comforting for Matt Ryan to be able to talk offensive ball with Arthur Smith. Not like his previous coaches, he couldn't talk offensive ball, but Smith gets it, right? Smith actually played. Played for North Carolina. He understands what it is to be in situations where it looks good on paper, but it just doesn't work out when you really are trying to apply it on the field. And Matt Ryan and him have really gelled. He's enjoyed really learning this offense with Arthur Smith. Let's see what Smith has in mind here. Third down and four. Big play. You got Pitts down in the middle. He was a go-to guy last time. From the Giants, 25, pressure on Ryan, catch is made for a first down by Tajay Sharp, New Jersey native, former Tennessee Titan, where he was with Arthur Smith, a longtime assistant coach and offensive coordinator with the Titans. And that's just an individual route, that's a way to beat and get right back inside 
He's working on Rodarius Williams out there at the corner position, and he stems outside, makes him move. As soon as he has his body weight, boom, gets right back inside for an easy completion. Mount Ryan, five for five on this drive. Ryan on first down, can't find anyone, and down he goes back at the 26-yard line. It's Austin <laughs> Johnson. <laughs> okay, Austin Johnson needs to work on his sack celebration. <laughs> he, all the pressure, he's going one-on-one. -on -one. Gets right around it, gets the sack, and I, I know I love everything except the dance. Oh Lord! Oh no! Third giant sack. Second down at 16. Empty backfield. Davis put out wide to the right. Ryan throws near side. It's Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus knocked out of bounds at the Giants' 11. Zacchaeus stepping up big, Sharp stepping up big, and they're getting Pitts involved. This has been a really good-looking drive for Matt Ryan. You know, they were backed up during the third and long, and Matt Ryan connects with Pitts for the first down, and they've been on a roll ever since, now down to the red zone. Longest drive of the game, 11th play. Ryan complete, and Ridley picks up a Falcons first down to the Giants' seven. See, it's interesting. We don't look at those as run pass options, but that definitely was. Matt Ryan, it was set for Mike Davis to get the ball. He instead motions in Calvin Ridley, understands the, the, the defense and what the secondary is doing, whips it out to Calvin Ridley. It was essentially a quick run that he get the first down. Under six minutes remaining. Falcons trail by seven. First and goal from the Giants' seven-yard line. As Ryan sets, throws, Ridley makes the catch. Tried to make an adjustment and cut back to the inside, but Adore Jackson was right there to bring him down, a game of just one. Yeah, I like what they did last time they were in the red zone, scored the touchdown by having Kyle Pitts as a decoy on one side. You see them bringing in Cord Cordero Patterson again because that's where you really create pressure for the defense of, okay, who am I going to guard? One guy's going one way, the other guy's going the other, and then they open it right back up in the middle for Zacchaeus. Ryan now eight for eight on this drive. Second and goal. Ridley slot to the left. Patterson in the backfield. Ryan on second down, throws to the end zone, and nearly picked off, dropped by Adoree Jackson. Wow. One, horrible decision by Matt Ryan. You don't usually see him do that. Two, I mean, Adoree is a punt returner. He was a kick returner at USC. He was a cover corner. Like, I don't know how he drops that. He's kicking himself for that. Let's hope it doesn't come back to bite him on this play. Third and goal from the Giants' six. Ryan moving to his right. Throws to the end zone. There is a flag. Flag. Looks like they're going to get Logan Ryan pass interference. Ryan was looking for Pitts. Pass interference, defense, number 23. The foul for the end zone. The ball will be placed at the one-yard line. Automatic first down. And the difference with this call that I agree with and the previous pass interference call, you can see Logan Ryan holding Kyle Pitts in the midsection and trying to bring him down. So, yeah, he's looking at the ball, playing the ball, but you can't sit there and try to drag the man down as you go up to defend it. Good call by the officials on that pass interference. New set of downs for the Falcons. They send in Spriggs as an extra blocker. First and goal from the one. Dexter Lawrence coming up. To make the play, brings down Davis, now second and goal.
Second and goal. Ryan looking, end zone, touchdown, Lee Smith. I can truly appreciate Arthur Smith using every player as a decoy and then giving it to the first option in this play, Lee Smith, who you'd never expect to get the football. He is considered the blocking tight end, all of a 280 pounds. That's great design by Arthur Smith in that offense. Lee Smith, a nine-year vet. The extra point from Koo is good. Matt Ryan, nine for 10 on the drive. The Falcons with under five minutes remaining have tied things up 14 apiece. Falcons tie the game at 14, a 15 play, 72 yard drive. The key were the third downs, four for four on third downs that series. They were having all types of issues with converting on third down in the first half, come back, put together a beautiful drive to answer and silence this Giants crowd. Not Ryan's second touchdown pass of the day. Falcons finally score in the fourth quarter. They have been outscoring 38-0. Both teams searching for their first victory. A look at the 0-2 teams to start this 2021 season. Of course, teams will play 17 games this year for the first time in the regular season. Giants head down to New Orleans next week. Arthur Smith and the Falcons will host Washington. Giants start from their 25-yard line. Jones under pressure, gets rid of it. Barkley makes the catch, gain of four. Falcons, as we mentioned earlier, allowed 80 points over the first two weeks. Giants have scored 14 today, one touchdown. They held them to field goals twice in the red zone. You can see the flashes against the Bucks. They had a Omaha. good series quarter. They played Omaha. really well. Hey, hey, save in blue, save in blue, save in blue. 54 is the mic. Omaha. Omaha. Second down and six. Saquon Barkley up the middle. Barkley. Picks up a Giants first down. If you joined us late, Giants lost Sterling Shepard, Darius Slayton, a couple of their top wideouts, and their defensive signal caller, Blake Martinez, all in the first half. Some key injuries. Under four minutes on the clock. Jones on first down. It's complete. Tight end Caden Smith, gain of nine. Remember, the Giants only have one timeout. And so that's why you see them in kind of this offense that's a little bit faster than normal. Ready. They use two timeouts on defense here in the second half. Omaha, set. Second down and one on the toss, it's Barkley. And he will not get there. Yeah, I don't like that play. You have been getting chunks four yards, five yards inside. Now all of a sudden you want to run outside. These guys are fast, man. You have Foyer, number 54, go sets the edge. Rest of the team just rallies around and they stay home, keep the gap integrity. You're not going to get that on this Falcons defense. They are, they're not a great defense, but they're definitely not a bad defense. And they've been playing very well today. Four down and two. Texas, 45 to Mike Boston. Boston. Daniel Jones on third down, fires, and that's broken up. Two flags. Fabian Moreau defending, pass intended for Galladay. Galladay on a slant route. Takes three steps. 
pass interference, defense. Number 22, ball will be placed at the spot of the foul, automatic first down. Big penalty on third down. And another good call. He was draped all over him before the throw. 2.15 remaining, tied at 14. Jones over the middle, pass was tipped, incomplete, intended for Ingram. We head to Los Angeles for a game break. Kurt. All right, just a quick reminder that when you guys are done, Matthew Stafford and the unbeaten Rams will, I guess, try to pull with Eli Manning since it's Eli Manning day there. They face Tom Brady and the world champion Buccaneers. It's America's Game of the Week at the conclusion of your contest there at MetLife. Kenny? All right, Kurt, we look forward to it. Tom Brady's first game in Los Angeles. The unbeaten Bucks, they've won 10 in a row, dating back to last season, and the unbeaten Rams. Second and 10. Jones under pressure, ball came loose. There is a flag as well. Holding offense, number 76. That penalty is declined, third down. Nate Solder, Brady's former teammate in New England. Dante Fowler using that explosion. Has the awareness to go straight for the ball. Third down and 19. Just over two minutes remaining. Jones connects, Sparkly out of the backfield. As we hit the two minute warning, here it is Rutherford. Tied at 14. Two teams in search of their first victory. Giants will punt it away. Just under two minutes on the clock in a 14-14 game. Williams deep. Dixon punting from his 40. Bounces into the end zone for a touchback. Matt Ryan and the Falcons offense have all three timeouts. 39 career game-winning drives in his 14 seasons. And if he can do exactly what happened in the last series, particularly on third down, convert on third down, get them in the field goal range. They have three timeouts. They have all the time in the world to run their normal offense. Did a good job of getting Pitts involved, Cordero Patterson involved. They let them just calmly do it and convert on third down. The fake toss and then the uh -oh. catch made by Cordero Patterson across the 40. Finally forced out of bounds at the 48 yard line. 28 yards on the catch and run. It, it's too simple. When you have him one-on-one -on -one out there, they're going to fake the run one way and then throw basically a little screen backside. Jake Matthews is running out to get the block and got just enough of the corner to be able to free Cordero Patterson. That's a big man running down the field. Biggest play of the day for this Falcons offense. From the 48 on first down, the handoff to Davis. Short gain. Time ticking down, three timeouts, doesn't matter. And, you know, the Giants really have done a good job in just stopping the run, the basic run plays. And you look, and it's really a 14-14 game. That tells you defense has played well on both sides of the football. It's just now every play is now exasperate, exaggerated because if you let up, 
you give up the touchdown, you get what you cost the game. Second and eight from midfield. Ryan complete. It's the tight end pitch. And now the Falcons are in field goal territory. 25-yard connection. Yeah, I've been waiting for that matchup all day long. Kyle Pitts against Jabril Peppers. Uh, you know, that's, that's no chance. It's too easy. Look, Jabril, Jabril Peppers almost quits defensively. As Kyle Pitts runs, this is what we call a seven route. He goes up about 13 yards and then now bends to the sideline. That's what you call a seven route that Kyle Pitts and Matt Ryan connect on. At this point, you can run the ball, run the clock down. You're in field goal range. Yeah, that's exactly what they do. They keep it on the ground. Now to 15 seconds. And the Falcons use their first timeout. A look at what took place just before the Falcons' last touchdown. Adoree Jackson nearly came up with the pick in the end zone, and then Ryan to Lee Smith as the Falcons tie the game at 14. And yes, everyone will harp on that play and say, oh, Adoree Jackson, just like Dexter Lawrence Thursday night against Washington. Uh, yeah, that play, crucial play, but there are many other plays within the game that they could have had particularly the penalties, the sacks, all of those things add up to the situation that they're in. Second down and nine, Falcons have two timeouts remaining. Here's Davis. Davis takes it down to the Giants, 21. You had a look at Youngway Koo, who tied for the NFL lead in points last season. Born in Seoul, South Korea, but he attended high school 15 miles from here in Ridgewood, New Jersey. Can be a hometown hero, so to speak, or... <laughs> only, only to his friends. Yes. The Giants fans will not like him. Nine seconds on the clock, third down and six. Giants lost their last game on the last second field goal. Dustin Hopkins initially missed, but Dexter Lawrence was flagged for the offside. And now, Young Wei Koo with a chance to win it. All right, Kenny, does he make it? We shall see. <laughs> what do you think? We shall see. <laughs> Ball spotted at the 22-yard line. It'll be placed down at the 30. 40-yard attempt for the win. Young Wei Koo from 40. The kick is straight through. The Atlanta Falcons for the last second victory for their new head coach, Arthur Smith. His dad, Fred, the founder and CEO of FedEx, the Falcons delivered this afternoon. Ah, uh, nice one. I uh, like where you went with that, Kenny, and Young Wei Koo right down the middle, ice in his veins. After the Giants took a 